UConn, they have canceled their football season. Now, not overly surprising. This is the first FBS team to cancel a football season. But it, they're saying it's due to risks associated with COVID-19, which obviously. Uh, the Weren't players, they considering dropping football the last couple of years anyway? Well, they were considering dropping down a level. Right, so they they switched because but they, they never did. Right, they wanted, did they ever do that? They wanted their other programs to be in the Big East, right? Yeah. So they they moved basketball over to the Big East. They moved the other programs to the Big East, and that left the AAC with no divisions. It's just one large conference with eleven teams, and they left the AAC. Right, so they have moved UConn football to independent status. And this was the first year they were going to have to try and figure out a schedule and whatnot. So they were playing Liberty, and they were playing New Mexico State, and they were, you know, they had a bunch of Power 5 teams that were just going to beat up on them. Like Ole Miss had them scheduled for, for later in the year. Uh, Michael jumps in. He said, UConn has football. Uh, they were they were going to struggle financially to have a season anyways. This was zero effect on other teams, just like Chris says about the Ivy League, school, uh, like, yeah, that, Ivy League schools. Yes, that's, that's one of the points that I wanted to make yeah. is – Everybody they can blame COVID, but they couldn't get 10 games together. Yeah, it, it, this is the thing. This does not affect anything. Everybody on social media wanted to make it out to be this gigantic deal. Oh, my God, UConn. They once made a BCS bowl game, and now they're not even going to have a season. Why didn't everybody else pay attention? Well, the reason is because they were struggling financially with football anyway. Randy Edsel's contract is, is guaranteed, so it doesn't matter if they play or not. Like, what does it matter at this point? You know, they were they had players transferring left and right. They had a bunch of different stuff going on. Um, this is what uh, part of the statement says. The players will remain on scholarship. Their status as students will continue through either virtual or in-person learning this academic year, which is kind of funny to me. And they will have access to the football facilities and support services in accordance with NCAA rules and local health protocols. Uh, according to Athletic Director David Benedict, the safety challenges created by COVID-19 place our football student-athletes at an unacceptable level of risk. He said, uh, the necessary measures needed to mitigate risk of football, student-athletes contracting the coronavirus are not conducive to delivering an optimal experience for our team. They said, uh, ultimately, the athletes would rather preserve their year of, uh, year of eligibility with an eye to competing under normal, typical circumstances during the 2021 season. Now, here's the thing that, that kind of gets me. They're talking about the possibility of doing in-person learning and everybody will have access to the football facilities and et cetera. That just, like, why, why would you even come out and, and say all of those things if you are canceling football specifically for the reasons of not gathering? Like, isn't that, isn't that kind of crazy? But they're not. They're canceling football because they can't afford, they could barely afford to play football anyway. And now to pay for that many COVID tests that they were going to have to do, they don't have that kind of money. Yeah. Yeah. And so they just said, this is way too much in the red. We're out. I mean, why why not just say that instead of coming out with all this other mess? Like, oh, because they don't want it. Because it, listen, because that doesn't get eyeballs on you. They don't make you look like a victim. <laughs> Dude, we're all about looking like victims. Okay? Like you're, you're dead on about this that. This is COVID's fault. This is COVID's fault that they lost their football program. Uh, Michael's already jumped in. He, he's got a long one. We'll, we'll jump off of the UConn thing. Um, but Michael's got a question really quick. He, he said, sorry, it didn't look that long when I typed it. So I'll go ahead and let you know, Chris, it's a little long. But it's something that we were interested in. But I don't know that we're really ready to discuss it yet. Uh, he said, what are your thoughts on the Colorado State investigation into coaches telling players uh, not to... Da, 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 sorry, he was sending more. Uh, not to report COVID symptoms, threatening reduced playing time if they quarantine and altering tracing to keep players practicing. I'm sure it's not the only school doing it, but crap like this will derail the college football season. So, uh, Michael said, UConn doesn't give a damn about safety, just like the NCAA, it's all about the money. So, here's the issue with the Colorado State stuff. All of that came out. And then, there were uh, just... All of that came out, as in one guy reported that he had tips that this was happening. Well, he, his tips were from like 10 different anonymous sources, right? So okay, when I say he can all make of that, that up, though, right? Right, right, correct. But then you had actual players on the team on Twitter coming out and saying, yo, none of this stuff ever actually happened. You need to reveal your sources because we think you're making this up. 
Yeah. So now because we we are in those meetings where they tell us every day, please, if you have any symptoms, report it to trainers, report it to coaches, tell us, stay where you are, don't worry about it. Every day they're doing these meetings. Are they pulling like these 10 kids aside and putting them in a closet and saying, hey, listen, if you get sick, don't say nothing. I know what we <laughs> said in this, I know what we said in this meeting, but don't say nothing. Did they pull those 10 kids aside and say that to them? It, apparently so, if if that's what's actually, you know. I mean, it, it, none of it makes any sense at all. Uh, Will Gomez said no one wanted to play for UConn before, and if they said the program's basically broke, it would be over. Uh, that's a good point. That's a valid point. you gotta you got to work with recruiting. But, yeah, so we – Chris, you and I, I would imagine, once they do this investigation, which Coach Adazio said that he wants them to go ahead – Yep. And do the investigation because it ain't true on on his end and with the guys that he knows. But if something is going on, he wants to know so he can fire whoever it is, right? So I was I was one of the I was one of the first people that I heard talk about this. I said this a month ago, maybe longer than that. Somebody's going to get caught doing this. Oh yeah, somebody's going to get fired because they are going to tell kids to hide this. I do believe that is going to happen. Okay, but the fact that when it came out, now I'm I am biased. I like Steve Adasio a lot. Okay, so yeah. I was pretty upset when I heard this. My guy did this, but um, it, it it just it stinks of we just live in a world where I just don't trust journalists anymore at all. We have found too many of them to take money to say anything people will pay them to say, and to and to just spread anything that they can spread to create discourse. All right. well, and and they're so I believe that you can call, yeah. I, I, I know that I'm a maniac. I know that that I am I am am like a fanatic when it comes to this stuff, and and I'm a little bit insane. I get that, but I just don't trust. You know, I'm I'm just so skeptical. I don't trust anybody. And when you bring out, I got ten anonymous sources, and then thirty football players come out on Twitter saying we're in these meetings every day, and they're they're telling us I got COVID, and they told me no. Stay in your room. Call the trainer. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Like, how are they telling those guys something different than they told these 10 guys? Because that doesn't make sense. Journalists are are so quick to run with a story before they actually confirm it. And and well, that's what makes it it's better so. to be first than to be right. Yeah. No, you're Nobody you're cares dead on. about being right. You are dead on. Dead on. So, you know, obviously we're gonna talk more about it as as it goes on, but uh but for now, uh, Michael said, that, that was my thought, Chris. It'll ruin this year if more of this comes out and is found to be true. I'm a big Colorado State guy as well. I hope everything is only up and up there. Yeah, no, we, we agree. Yeah. We, we hope for, uh, for good things for basically everybody. But, yeah, we, we both kind of – Well, I, don't, I mean, I, I will tell little. you, I believe that some coach is going to do this. Whether it gets leaked out or not, I do think that some coach is going to pressure some kid into covering something up at some point in time. Yes. I think that's going to happen. I'm not afraid. I'm not naive enough to know that, you know, that that won't happen. No, you uh, but you are the correct. The people that are going to be coerced to stay and hide it are going to be the elite of the elite players. Nobody if 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 you're talking to some backup DB that's third string, nobody's telling him to hide his symptoms, all right? Now we want you to stay in that room so you don't get the good players sick. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Michael said did Adam Schefter break that story? Uh, God. hey, so so here's here's the deal. You remember we we kind of complained about Schefter getting the numbers wrong for the Mahomes deal. He wasn't wrong on the on the deal, like at, all of that stuff that came out. The when when they found the actual con- like when they actually got the contract, it was four hundred and fifty million guaranteed with incentives up to five hundred and whatever million. So Schefter's number wasn't technically wrong. It just it didn't have all the incentives and all that stuff that everybody else ended up getting. So. Uh, either way, like Ed Schefter does kind of run with stuff every now and then. Which just, just goes bit. fast. He goes yeah. really, really fast. Yeah, as soon as he gets something, he goes ahead and, and splits that That's thing all. out. And, I'm, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure that there's somebody out there that'll tell me that that matter, like that somehow affects their credibility. That if they can be the first to break it, I don't know how that makes them more money or how that makes ESPN more money. I don't, I don't get that because it's Twitter. Um, but – it felt like you wrote an article and and you were the first to get eyes on it. You just tweeted out stuff. I don't I don't know how that equates to you know. Yeah, I don't know how to monetize that. 
I would I would rather my guy be dead on right and be the fifth person to tweet something out yeah. than, than to tweet something out and it be half right, close to right, whatever. I, you know, I yeah. just don't understand the reason for trying to be fast yeah, when either. we get so much bad information. I agree. I agree. Let's uh, let's move on. We got three more topics. 